<laughs> yeah. So the key thing there, Sean, was that uh, um, you're almost redefining what um, mission or ministry is in a way in terms of how we can express our faith. It's, it's not just, you know, doing a Bible study or mentoring, you know, someone. It's actually, you know, there's ways that we can influence and change society, which is still God's work. Yeah, I sometimes came back to this little verse when it says God makes it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And I don't know why God set that on me at, when I was learning this, but God delights in the whole world to know his love and his goodness, even on those who would reject him because he gives them the freedom to reject them. So he makes it rain on the unrighteous. So he would have Christians be a blessing into communities because he wants to show his goodness through them and what he's like. Um, and so as we do go into our workplaces, we represent his nature to people around us in his goodness, his affection, in his mercy, in his faithfulness, in his wisdom. And so when I'm doing my work or you guys do your work, it's like I'm coaching people on what God is like, even though I'm not talking to them about him directly necessarily. But as they see me and how I do things, I'm coaching them in what God is like because they'll generally they'll know I'm a Christian. And one day then they realize, oh, you know, that, that, that they might reach out to him, that they, you know, he is at hand, that they might reach out to him and grab him and, and know that there's a sense of eternity on them. But in the meantime, I'm going to bless people because people need tax returns done. Clients need these things to be served for the good operating of the economy, for the good operating of their businesses. They pay their employees' salaries, so do we. Uh, and the goods that my clients, for, yeah, it is a part of the world that God has created and he wants that to, to work well. So I'm also just being a blessing and loving in what I do. Um, but that's all part of you know, how God's wanting it to reign on the righteous and righteous, but people will turn to him in that course as well. Yeah. Sean, I'm so encouraged. It's, um, you know, you're a living, walking, talking, integrated, in, you know, integrated Christian. Um, Something that I wanted to ask you guys, and I might ask this to Adrian and Deb, because we're going to double click a little bit on the um, how it is that. I'm sorry, because if I was to ask you, Sean, I, I mean, just to think about this, and you can maybe answer this a bit later. But do you think that your perspective is the normal Christian perspective, and or is it actually quite people would find it quite like quite refreshing and kind of quite odd? Um, and, and I think back to, it's almost like you said your eyes were opened at some point. And when I, I want to take, ask you guys to all go back into your stories of where, you know, I guess what you, where is it that you were taught about what it meant to be an, out, an outward Christian or expressive, expressive Christian? What was, when you grew up in church, what was your idea of what evangelism was? What was your idea of what it meant to, what was work to you? You know what I mean? Where did you get your ideas from? Um, what was the state of the church at the time when it gave you those ideas? I think Sean mentioned a few things, but I'd love to hear maybe Deb to share and then AIDS could share a little bit about that. Where did your ideas come from? Yeah, like you just jogged my memory there. Like I think because um, I've grown up in, in church, yeah, since I was a child. And um, when I sort of went out as an adult, my first thing that I, I was pursuing was music, actually. Um, I was a singer-songwriter back in the day. Um, but part of that, I actually felt, um, you know, I felt like it was this, there was a time when I was traveling so much and going to different churches um, and ministering at different churches that I was away from my own home church for a long period of time. And I actually felt um, in the early days a little bit bad that I was never at my church or at different churches. And then uh, at some point I really spoke to my pastor and I said, it was this sense of uh, releasing me to minister out there, still in four walls of churches, but in different churches. And they kind of, it was a bit of a new concept of so, um, being released by the pastor to, to, you know, be missional and be out there. But that was like an exception. It was like, um, and I look back and I go, you know, I'm not the only exception just because I have this way of ministering in music. Um, just like Sean, you were saying, you know, every, you know, these seven years or these, every sphere of society. We need to be sent and we need to be released as God's people to minister in those places. And so I feel like um, even back then when I was doing that, that was already, a, you know, a different culture I had to sort of navigate as a very specific and very unique kind of calling. But really it shouldn't be that it's unique, you know. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of my, my experience. And I think, Sean, you are 
yeah, you, you're speaking a language that I totally get, you know, but a lot mm-hmm. of, I think a lot of um, the generation that has been in church and really established beautiful, like, foundational churches in our nations and our cities <coughs> have spent a long time building up the structure, building up a, you know, the four walls of it into these strong, healthy, you know, very, um, you know, there's a rhythm behind all that, but they've, that's been their main focus. But then actually sending us out has not and it's been kind of more our generation potentially. But Abe, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, um, I mean, I, I grew up in the church since I was little and, um, you know, just with a, a family that, you know, just really, um, you know, brought, brought us up in the faith and, um, you know, I was heavily involved at church in a whole lot of different different areas, you know, from, you know, um, you know, leading Sunday school to, you know, youth and young adults and 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 I think, um, the thing that actually um, was on my heart from probably around um, high school, I think God really put on my heart in one particular service. He said, you know, I just felt the calling to go into full-time ministry. Um, and um, and then for, for years, I think I, when I had that revelation, I, I was, you know, going through all these different um, ministries and within the church and, um, you know, and just really, I guess, understanding what that looks like and and I think the thing that actually shifted it for me was um, I always felt oh what is full-time ministry like I'm like well is it just those people who are paid or you know who are pastors or go through bible college you know I was working out what what does it mean like what is that definition and the thing that shifted it for me was actually doing more mission work and just going overseas doing beach missions um, and um, seeing um, what it's like in you know, in on the ground, you know, even say for, you know, missionaries, they're definitely in full-time ministry, you know, um, but really just seeing what it's like and the struggles they go through, but, you know, what what actually is ministry on the ground? And I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's not that glorified. It's nothing special. It's in many ways what we're doing back at home and just what we're doing on a day-to-day basis. And... Um, and I think that that's probably the big shift for me where I started to realize, oh, okay, full-time ministry isn't just, you know, a title or someone who's paid or, you know, who's in a formal role. It's actually, you know, every believer. And I think that sort of set me on the journey of working out, okay, well, what does that actually mean? What does that look like in terms of our expression? You know, like it's, um, you know, without over-spiritualizing everything, like it, it means that we're and do Bible studies just, and that's our only expression, you know, like it's, um, you know, like how do we actually bring God in our, our faith into our workplace, into our family, into all the different contexts. And and I think the, the main mindset shift, I think, was really to um, start to identify that, you know, we're believers everywhere and everyone, like there is no full-time ministry. That's the definition. We are just believers wherever we are. And we have context and God brings us through life, you know, and, you know, as we engage with, you know, people in life and the different contexts that we're in, we are believers. And what does that look like, you know, and how, what does, you know, the expression and how we walk with God look like in each of those contexts? So that for me was a, has been the journey in, of life, just working out what that looks like. Um, but I think, yeah, to the, to the question, it was that that was probably the shift, just um, that, yeah, just really seeing, you know, the what's happening on the ground, you know, different parts of the world and just, just really, you know, shocking the system. Like it's just making me realise, oh, wow, you know, there's there's nothing, you know, that glorified about, you know, all those those definitions which I had started to, you know, um, yeah, think that my expression as a believer was based on. I think um, AIDS, um, as an entrepreneur and in different spheres, both, you know, property and just, you know, um, designing cups and stuff. You're in the business world a lot and, um, you know, you've had some instances of really seeing Christians out there who are, who are living um, very much, you know, on mission in what they're doing and making impact. Um, but, yeah, more stories I'm sure from you in a sec. But, Kinson, you've got something as well you want to share? Um, you know, it's, I think, 
Adrian's story has, is uh, similar to mine. Um, I sort of grew up in a, my, my parents were probably like more nominal Christians when we grew up. My father had very much a, um, the mindset of, <clears throat> of like, you know, work is work and church is church. And, and even his, his, you know, his, his idea of, of, um, of what that looked like for him was like, oh, I, we work really hard and we, <clears throat> we make a lot of money and then we give, you know, some of that money to, to church or to, to ministry. Right. And that was like, and he didn't really, he tried not to mix the two things. Um, in the beginning, although although I suspect my mom changed, um, or kind of like you know, adjusted his his thought process uh, through it. But um, to Adrian's point, um, you know, one example out of my personal life was I was um, so I was working at a fashion company, and then I was sent to Shanghai to um, to basically open stores, right? And one of the things I think I have been taught um, hugely influenced by by my mentor is this idea that you know we <clears throat> we all believers are part of a royal priesthood, right? And actually, he he said, you know, real ministry, um, real ministry. And I don't want to paraphrasing, but he would say like ministry um, happens with the layman, lay people, you know, Deb. And there was there was just the idea that it's just like I mean like the way I interpreted it was like it's just it's a numbers game, right? Like for every one full time minister or pastor, mm. you know, you have fifty, eighty, a hundred um, believers, right? And it's like that full time person can't know and develop relationships with all like all those folks right so it was incumbent upon um lay people to bring the gospel to their individual spheres of influence the way i kind of described it to friends and to my wife was like we're not like i'm not this title uh for for work i mean i am right to the exterior world but but our, but our vision is that we are, I said, we are extraordinarily well compensated missionaries um, here in, in China, mm. right? And so we didn't have to raise support. There was, um, there was no like, you know, there's there no governing body, but our mission was the same. It's like our mission was to bring the gospel uh, into the country. And what that looked like, for instance, was, um, you know, my, my wife had started a relationship with um, the assistant GM for one of the malls that we were trying to get into. And uh, she, she just kind of was just like bold in her faith and was like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, um, you know, and this is, this is, this is a senior person. She's, she's part of the Chinese Communist Party, right? So they have to, they have to kind of like proclaim like, atheism and no belief in religion but uh because of that conversation and because of that um that relationship when when um when that lady the assistant gm like walked by a church in the united states she kind of walked in and she ended up like listening to just a worship service and the holy spirit like impacted her you know she's like she's like i don't understand i, I just started crying I didn't even, I don't like, I never been in a church before. My wife was like, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's like speaking to you. Right. And she's like, really? It's, and, and, you know, she, she kind of like just talked her through the gospel. Um, we hosted alpha groups uh, in our home, something that I, th that we were able to boldly do. Um, not because of any kind of particular bravery, I would say, but mostly because we, the worst that could happen to us is we would just get booted out of the country. Uh, we wouldn't get imprisoned by the Chinese government, so I wouldn't like I wouldn't ascribe too much um, credit for that. But we wanted to do our part, 